Overwatch 2 is an expensive free-to-play game, and I'm not just talking about the price tags on cosmetics. A lot has changed since they removed the sticker price, and today I'm here to talk about these changes. While Overwatch 2 in itself is an incredibly fun game, and in my opinion, a decent step towards bringing the franchise into the modern gaming world, the monetization stands in contrast to a lot of the great and fun additions they have made to the game. Because unfortunately, it isn't as simple as battle pass equals $10 equals good. The grind is absolutely real, and it would be an Activision Blizzard product if there wasn't anything that is hopelessly overpriced. Pricing alone isn't the issue though, because Overwatch 2 has some real problems when it comes to progressing towards new cosmetics for both the paid as well as the free track in the battle pass. So what exactly is different? For one, Overwatch has completely removed the loot boxes from the game, instead replacing it with a battle pass, an in-game store that is rotating different items, and the ability to purchase any cosmetic you want outright, so long that it isn't a seasonal item or part of some sort of progression system them like competitive play, achievements, or the aforementioned battle pass. And because I know this is why you're here, let's start this conversation with the price tags for these cosmetics. For a free-to-play game, the cash store actually looks fairly par for the course. They sell grossly overpriced single skins for about $19, which are supposed to make the $20 bundles look more enticing. There is a section specifically for Overwatch League cosmetics, which is the professional league, and the reason they use a different currency here is because you can acquire this just by watching the league after connecting your YouTube and Battle.net accounts. Now, this is obviously personal preference, but I do think that cosmetics in Overwatch are some of the best in the industry. 20 bucks for an optional purchase of a pretty cool looking skin, including an emote, victory pose, voice line, and spray, doesn't seem like too much of a ripoff to me. Again, made more enticing by the $19 skin that gets neither bells nor whistles. When it comes to cosmetics other than skins, it is worth mentioning that old items appear to be priced lower than new ones in many cases. This is something they have done in Overwatch 1 as well. Their catalog of seasonal items got bigger every year, with last year's offerings being priced lower than the new ones. And something similar seems to happen here, where seasonal or recently added items appear to be priced higher than regular old ones. In general, Blizzard values rare skins which are basic recolors at $3, epic skins at $10, and legendary skins at $19. Depending on whether they are new or not, most other items are gonna run you anywhere from $2.50 to $7. And just to put this into context, someone at Blizz genuinely believes that a a tiny little weapon charm should be priced the same as a badass highlight intro. At least voice lines only cost you $1 a pop, with victory poses costing 3 and emos running you $5. I actually think most of these items are priced fairly reasonably, as far as free-to-play games are concerned. Again, the value lies in the eye of the beholder, and considering the fact that we're talking about artificial scarcity in the form of digital goods here, how much any of these items should be worth is neither here nor there. What I am more concerned with is progression. Now, because I have purchased a battle pass, I don't actually have an easy way of discerning what items a free-to-play player could unlock. Games like Apex are a lot more transparent in that regard, but also cosmetics in Apex often look like they were made in a random assets generator. Somebody who can't or doesn't want to spend money on Overwatch 2 is going to be able to unlock two legendary skins, two weapon charms, two souvenirs, one highlight intro, and 15 miscellaneous items. If they diligently do their challenges, they are also going to be able to afford every other battle pass for free, because Blizzard allows you to accumulate enough paid currency through challenges to make that happen. That means a free-to-play player is never going to be able to express themselves through their cosmetics because all they can get are the same skins that literally everybody else who completed the battle pass gets. But that's alright, because at least they get to play the game for free. Unfortunately, the same is the case for people who do spend money on the battle pass. It is an unfortunate side effect of their choice to remove loot boxes. Uh, hear me out on this one. In Overwatch 1, a dedicated player would be able to unlock pretty much every cosmetic for their heroes of choice completely for free. That's that's because the game awarded you enough loot boxes as part of the leveling process to accumulate a whole collection of items on top of enough currency to buy the few things you might be missing. If you are one of these Overwatch 1 players who hoarded their coins by the way, you can actually still spend those on skins in the game instead of using real money. The problem now is, everybody who doesn't want to spend more than 10 bucks a season is basically going to look the exact same. And I'm willing to bet that is by design to entice you to spend more money on the in-game store. I mean sure, you can use the free currency you get from the channel challenges to buy skins eventually instead of a battle pass, but Blizzard knows that makes for a terrible use of your time. Now let's take Apex as an example again. For Apex Legends, I've also spent 10 bucks on a battle pass, except that completing it gave me enough paid currency to just get the next one for free, and I still get loot boxes as free rewards just while playing. The skins I get are not the same ones as my friends, even when none of us spend any money, just because Respawn is tossing free loot boxes out on a regular basis. Of course I'm not going to hail Apex as the gold standard, because they 
they famously overcharge people with FOMO inducing limited time skins that require you to purchase hundreds of dollars worth of other skins first in order to unlock. And that's not even mentioning the famous respawn dev who defended the egregious pricing by saying that making it cheaper would not move the needle after calling those who spent no money freeloaders. But that isn't even my whole point. Not being able to creatively express yourself is about the most first world problem you could come up with. It makes the whole cosmetic system a bit less interesting and a bit more predatory. But ultimately, most people are not gonna care. What people are going to care about is the grind. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with a bunch of math, but needless to say that any of the value the Battle Pass offers is gonna be null and void if your average player is not able to unlock it. 10 bucks for a mythic skin seems like insane value if you compare it to a $19 legendary skin that is not half as cool and not customizable, but only if you can finish it. Sure, you can dump even more money into the Battle Pass at $2 per level, but I don't think free-to-play whales are concerned with anything I'm talking about here anyway. Including the 20% boost you get from paying your 10 bucks and including me doing all of my daily challenges, I only get to level 5.5 on the Battle Pass after 2 hours of gameplay. And usually, these things don't become less grindy as you progress. According to some free-to-play Twitter math with a runtime of 60 days per Battle Pass, you'd have to play 48 minutes a day to complete the entire thing. Now here's the problem. A lot of people have this impression that casual players or busy people in general don't have a lot of time per day to play video games. And of course, these people exist. But what is just as likely is that they don't have any time to play games at all until their one day off where they want to spend 4, 6, maybe even 8 hours just grinding to their heart's content. Now keep in mind that these 5 levels that a free-to-play player can get in 3 hours or a paying battle pass owner can get in 2 hours also factor in doing your daily challenges. Once you have knocked these things out, the grind is gonna become a lot more noticeable. There are still weekly and lifetime challenges, but unless you want to spend your whole day focusing these down instead of just, I don't know, playing the game you want to, it's very likely a lot of people are not gonna get this thing done in 60 days. And that's important, because if you average 9 to 5 dudes with one day a week to play video games can't finish their battle pass to get that mythic skin they spent 10 bucks on, they're gonna stop spending money on it. And if Overwatch 2 doesn't make money, something tells me we're in for another content drought until Overwatch 3. Apex mitigates this very smartly by unlocking new challenges gradually throughout a season. Players who want to knock them out the day they are released can do so, but people who can't play for a couple of weeks can come back to a whole arsenal of challenges to complete. They can work on multiple challenges at once to catch up on the days they couldn't spend gaming, which makes it a lot more likely they can finish a dang thing. It is very in character for Blizzard to demand of their players that they log in to play every day, rather than giving them the option to unlock things as their own schedule allows them. The last few World of Warcraft expansions famously disrespected players' time as a means to bolster their playtime metrics to look better during the next earnings call. So it isn't the price tags on the cash store that make Overwatch too expensive, it's the time you have to spend to unlock anything of value at all. But what's your take on this? Do you think the new free-to-play monetization scheme works perfectly fine, or do you find the pricing a bit too steep as well? You can leave your own thoughts down in the comment section below. But until then, thank you everybody so much for watching, don't forget to drop me a like on your way out if you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you want to see more, and definitely ring that bell icon to not miss out on my next upload. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and until next time, peace.